March 19, 2020. The time to start a garden and get it growing is now. Look at True Leaf Market. They provide seeds to everybody across the country. They're having delays because of the COVID-19. They also had an earthquake out there that affected their factory. Now they're saying that due to the demand from the COVID-19, people ordering seeds, they may ship orders eight to 10 business days late. I'm gonna point this out to you real loud and clear. When you realize that the industrial farming and has failed this year in the fall you may have a hard time getting enough seeds to grow your own food sure you've gone out and you bought as much supplies as you can and people went crazy over toilet paper somebody stabbed somebody in the store with a wine bottle that was broken over petty stuff don't be part of the herd there's been numerous of us that have been screaming at you get prepared for this when you had massive crop failures across the world fell last year and a lot of the reserve food crops ruined by the flooding in the Midwest or the droughts in Europe or the flooding in Europe or the flooding and or droughts in China, Russia. Russia is one of the biggest wheat producers in the world. They had a terrible year last year, and it don't look any better this year either. Now we got flooding in the Midwest. I can't stress this to you enough right now. If you think that spending 40 or $50 on seed is a waste of time and a waste of money and growing a garden is a waste of time and a waste of money, I'm going to pray for your soul. And hope that you pleasantly pass away from hunger. This is not a joke. This year's food crop is not going to be any better. Maybe worse. There ain't going to be a lot of canned vegetables on the shelf anymore. There's going to be a rationing. This economy, and with this COVID-19, whether you believe it's a real pandemic or not, has caused an economic collapse. People are going out of business. They're not going to work. They're going to get paid to stay at home. But it's probably some type of universal income until they can get things figured out, right? Yeah, you can't eat money. Well, technically you could, but it's probably not good for your system. Now they're getting shipping delays. They had an earthquake. God knows what would have happened to a place like this if it went down. There's, I mean, there's other sea, sea places, but they're all going to see the same thing. And you're going to start seeing shortages in the store. It won't be because of panic buying. It'll be because it'll be rationed. Limit one, limit two. Later, if it gets worse and they can no longer control it, well, the military will take it over. The government will. They'll do the logistics. And you're just in time delivery. It's going to be government delivery. You know all that works out, right? When is the government ever delivered on time? Never. telling you you better get some seeds and I want to talk about microgreens real quick one of my favorite subjects now microgreens you can grow in the window in your house indoors they grow anywhere from 5 to 15 days you have something to eat right away now if you don't know what a microgreen is it's where you get the first water leaves and then the secondary leaves pop out once the secondary leaves pop out that's what they call a microgreen if you let it continue to grow and get a little bigger and put on more leaves, that that's what we call a baby green. And I'm pretty sure you understand what a, a mature full-size plant is. The most popular ones are sunflower seeds and pea shoots. 
number one and two. The one I like to grow additionally with this is lettuce. I like the gourmet lettuce or the mixed lettuce. If you get the mixed uh, garden greens, you want to eat them fairly quick because they get pretty tough if you let them go beyond microgreens. If you get the gourmet lettuce, like the butter crunch and stuff like that, um, you can let them grow the baby greens and they're very tender and tasty in your salads. Now there's no excuse not to grow these because a lot of these come with the growing trays, okay? Um, as far as the kits. And you can see the microgreen growing kits over here. So let me show it to you real quick. If you have not bought your seeds yet, your window of opportunity is closing. And once these, once the seeds are no longer available or they're in short supply, you're going to be like the herd trying to find some seeds to grow some food because you just realized that it's going to be too expensive for you to buy food. You might have to make a difference between choosing between paying the mortgage and eating. Wouldn't you rather pay the mortgage and grow your own food? Now you can get microgreen kits that start with soil based ones, they give you the tray, or hydroponic ones. Now hydroponic are easy to grow for microgreens, but if you're going to grow them into anything larger, it gets a little messy and you've got to control the water alkaline balance and you've got to feed them and everything else. You go to the simple soil based, you can get any kind of soil and just, you know, basically grow them off the top of it. So let's look at, um, and I do have some of these little trays right here. Now, these are out of stock. They're pretty nice because they really pop up in the microgreen real quick. And you don't have to water them at all. And you can use soil or substrate in these, hydroponic. You can do it hydroponically or you can use soil, which is what I do both, just depending. So let's look at the uh, soil-based one. And what do you get with it? Well, you get six 21 by 10 inch growing trays. Okay. That right there is a bargain itself. You already get the trays. You can tray up three of these. Basically, that's like a 20 by 10. A pretty standard tray. And I've gone over how to grow these, but they also give you a, um, a pH test strip kit. Uh, two eight quart bags of soil spray bottle because you have to mist your uh, seeds until they sprout and then they give you assortment of seeds like sunflower 45 ounce buckwheat 16 ounce dun pea 16 ounce cilantro 4 ounce and Detroit red beet or another soil whatever so then they give you the growing instructions. I've done videos on this. I have a growing instruction for these types uh, for microgreens, whether you're going to do hydroponic or soil based. They're fast and easy to grow. They produce 40 times the amount of nutrition than standard produce you get off the shelf. Plus, they don't have all the chemicals, the pesticides, and the glyphosate from the glycol that they spray all over everything from Mr. Roundup. You know what I'm talking about. I would get you garden seeds, though. Now let's talk about, real quick, what type of fertilizers you can use that are natural. Rock dust. Okay? There's three types. There's glacial rock dust, and it's just like it sounds. It's the rock deposited by glacial action. Okay? Um, then there's the uh, basalt rock dust. Is made of volcanic rock called basalt. It's actually a byproduct of mining basalt for other purposes, for such as landscaping, decorative rocks, construction, and industrial uses. When the rocks are crushed in the size needed for purposes, some of them are rendered in a powder in the process. So basically, there's a little chart over here telling you the difference between glacial basalt, and, and we're going to talk about azomite because it comes from one place in the world. It comes from central Utah. Azimut is a unique type of rock that comes only from one mine in central Utah. Azimut is an acumen of the phrase A to Z of minerals. Because, it, and the it is just a rock thing. So, common name for a rock name. 
So azomite was formed when a volcano spewed tons of ash into a nearby seabed millions of years ago. The water dried up with all the resulting ash and marine muck turned into rock. In geological terms, azomite is called hydrated sodium calcium as aluminum sulfate. Uh, aluminum silicate, sorry. It contains the widest range of minerals of all the rock dust. Good for magnesium, calcium, potassium, and silicon, and also provides additional 70 trace minerals. That means small amounts of minerals. Then there's ways to apply this. You can put 10 pounds per 100 square feet on the garden. You spread it around the top, and you water it. And for potting, you use a half teaspoon um, on top, and then you just water the plant, and the, the fertilizer gets in there. You can spread it around your trees, and it'll help fertilize your trees. Instead of using a, a grill spike, you can just go ahead and use this. Use about one to five pounds each for each tree, depending on the size. And then uh, if you're going to spread this on your lawn, use about five pounds per square, thousand square feet. If you don't know what that is, that's 20 by 50. Okay, and then you just water it. So, of the best ones, probably the best one is azomite to buy. Now, where can you get it? Well, over here, truthfully, uh, over here at Amazon, like again, I'm not an affiliate. I don't have make any money off of True Leaf Market or Amazon or anybody else. I'm just telling you where I get my stuff. It's most reliable. You can get a 44-pound bag of azomite that's micronized, ready to spread anywhere you want to, and use it as rock dust fertilizer. Now, there's also other things like uh, Epsom salt, okay? You have Epsom salt. If it's unscented, you can use it. It has magnesium and sulfate in it. It's used for fertilizer, too. It's used, if you've got yellowish leaves and stuff like that, it'll take grain them up for you. The magnesium sulfate. And here's another thing that says flower food for, for a pound for flower food. Well, guess what? This is a... Uh, Basically the same price, and you get three more pounds. And you can use common Epsom salt that you actually use to bathe in and all that stuff and soak your feet in and stuff like that. And it's pretty much uh, uh, neutral as far as base or acidic, so it doesn't really affect the the, um, the acidic of the soil. And so I'm going to just say this. You might want to get a bag of this someday if you have problems with real poor soil. Then toss your leaves in and all your mulch and build up your compost and get your micro, get your uh, worms and everything. Go over there, Green Greg's, and get your worms. I'll leave his uh, thing in the show me more box Go over there for Green Greg's. He sells worms. Um, so now you know about the fertilizer that you should get. It's all natural. And go get your seeds because the time for growing a garden is now. You don't want to be like the herd that found out that, oh, wow, we should have stocked up because all of a sudden when the crisis was mentioned for COVID-19, everybody did a run on the stores, panicked. You don't want to be the herd. This fall, you're going to find out that the food crops are going to fail again. Industrial farming is going to fail us. It had failed us last year. We had massive crop failures in China, Russia, Europe, United States, Africa, all over. The bread baskets of the world are drying up. The climate's changing to the grand solar minimum. The uh, cloud nucleation is getting more, which means we're getting more rain, more, 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 uh, less sunlight. And I know about the CTs. You don't need to mention those to me. What we're basically facing is that industrial farming is going to go offline for the most part. And so the food that you buy at the store is going to be very, very expensive. And you may have to make the choice between paying your mortgage or eating. Which one do you want to do? I think you should try both. The way you can do that is you go and get some seeds and start your garden this summer. It's almost it's springtime now. It's almost time for some of you to start. Now, what can you start that's early in spring? It's, even if there's still some snow on the ground. Carrots, onions lettuce you can start those right now in the ground just go ahead and soil them in spinach another good one the ones that like the cold weather uh kale there's a whole bunch of them that are early starts and if you're unfamiliar with when to start stuff you can go to farmer's almanac or you can go to burpee seeds or stuff like that and and look at the growing chart but i'm telling you people the time to get your seeds is now 
and gr start growing a garden now. Because if you don't, you're not going to find out whether that seed's going to work or not in your soil or your soil's too poor. You need to do something to your soil. And if you haven't done it and you try to grow them and you fell and you can't afford food or you can't find food, you're out of luck. You're definitely going to be out of luck when the herd goes and tries to find as many seeds as they can because they're going to realize they're going to starve to death this winter if they don't. You've been warned.